Today I would like to present uh, the, the, the current uh, state of, of the works at the not, not really pleasant place, uh, the extermination camp of Treblinka too. So uh, first of all, <clears throat> I would like to, to, to warn that the paper might present some, some uh, discomforting graphical images, so viewer discretion is advised. Uh, so the whole history starts in, in 1939 when, when Nazi Germany invades Poland and a large population of Jews is brought under their control. Um, since uh, even before uh, the, there were plans of relocation of the Jews from uh, European Jews from Europe and uh, it was it was known as the Madagascar plan of Rademachas and uh, it was postponed due to the loss of the of the uh, Battle of Britain and the naval blockade of, of the Reich. Uh, so uh, the plan uh, evolved, and uh, in in 1941, another large population of Jews get under the control of, of Germany uh, after the invasion of the on the Soviet Union. And uh, actually, in 1941, that's when the the extermination of Jews has begun. However, back then it was just initially done with uh, so-called Einsatzgruppen, uh, which were just the mobile commandos uh, killing people at place and the gas vans. Uh, but in early 1942, the final solution of the Jewish question was presented uh, by the main architect of it, Reinhard Heinrich, and uh, at the 1Z conference. Uh, and, uh, the operation Reinhardt uh, has begun. So in 1942, uh, in, in a, as a part of the operation Reinhardt, Beuzhets, Sabibur, Majdanek and Treblinka uh, death camps were raised and uh, started to operate. Helmno uh, Nadnerem, called Kulohov and Auschwitz Oshwienchim were additional camps uh, which uh, were operating, though they were not a part of Aktion Reinhardt. Um, between May 42 and November 43, uh, where the, the, the Reinhardt action actually took place, the death factory in Treblinka only killed between 800,000 and or over to uh, 1 million uh, of Polish Jews. Most of them were, were Polish Jews. Uh, a total of, of circa 2 million have, have been killed between October 41 and November 43 in all the facilities of Action Reinhardt. Uh, since 1942 until 1944, there was a Zonder Action uh, 1005, and it was an operation designed to remove all the traces of the mass murder, and this is particularly important regarding the further research. Remains of the victims have been exhumated, uh, cremated, and grounded and reburied, and all the camp facilities were carefully dismantled and taken away. Uh, so, uh, just to sum up the, the historical background around the 800, it's estimated that around 800 to million uh, people served in Schutzstaffel and uh, actively participated in genocide. However, only about 20,000 was ever found guilty and fewer than 600 uh, received heavy sentences. So, so that's the background to under, underline the importance of this research. So the site itself, Treblinka II, is uh, in central eastern Poland in the Mazovian Voivodeship. It's like one and a half an hour from Warsaw, from the capital of Poland. Um, officially called uh, Zonderkommando Treblinka. Uh, it was constructed in 1942 and dismantled in, in November 43. Um, just, uh, just, just to say how terrible this place is, never and nowhere ever in the world have so many people been murdered in such a short time. It was thoroughly dismantled to get rid of any traces of, of, the, of the infrastructure. And even, even more, in 1944, a farmhouse was built to hide the evidence of anything happening at the place. Um, furthermore, 
among all the death camps, there is the least numbers of survivors which could testify about the, the facility. Hence, it could be considered as the least recognized of all the death camps. That's how the site looks like. Uh, I, I cannot mark the extent since the actual extent is not really known. Uh, that's the satellite imagery with um, LiDAR data and with the vegetation filtered out, you can see that in general it's a, it's a flat uh, landscape, which is pretty characteristic for, uh, for the Mazovian uh, plateau. Uh, in the northern part of the estimated area, uh, we got Aeolian sands deposits and uh, in the southern part fluvial glacial deposits gravels and sands of various fractions with uh, numerous pebbles and boulders and uh, these information are, are pretty important from the point of view of methodology. Uh, just a few post-war uh, investigation had been conducted uh, first by Soviet forces in 1944 and later uh, by the Central Commission for Investigation of German Crimes in Poland. Um, however, as mentioned, all the facilities have been removed and uh, uh, despite that, the soil kept on revealing some terrifying secrets and uh, these were the only traces which were known. Uh, over the years, the sign remained neglected and has been looted. Um, in, in early 60s, a large memorial has been constructed, which uh, totally altered the, 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 the landscape of the, of the site. Um, and it has to be uh, underlined that until the 20th century, there was no interest of scholars on, on the site. And uh, just from, uh, from 2012, uh, two different faculties began to research. And, uh, it has to be mentioned that uh, Caroline Sturdy calls from, from Staffordshire University has a, a great contribution in the, in the history of this research. And the, the second theme is, is the team of Sebastian Ruzicki from the Warsaw University of Technology and, and that's our research. There are no plans of the camp and no visible traces of the infrastructure as you may might have seen in the lighter data. Um, all, this, all the circulation reconstructions are based on the witnesses, uh, testimonies and sketches. They're inaccurate and sometimes even the shape of the, of the facility is not correct. So the, the, the research started in 2016 uh, <clears throat> by the Department of Geodesy and Cartography and been conducted uh, in the, until, until today. Uh, it, it got some, uh, some funding from the Ministry of Culture and National Heritage of the Republic of Poland. And uh, it's, it's conducted uh, in the partnership with the Museum of Treblinka, um, which has been constituted in 2018. Um, and uh, the Rabbinical Council, uh, which, which supervises the, the, the research uh, according to the Halakha law. So basically in the project there is a bunch of methods which help us to, to understand the topography of the site. Um, however, uh, we, uh, I, I will focus here just on magnetometry since this is my part uh, in the project. <coughs> So, the extent of the survey, in, actually it was the, the, the last week of 2017 when we've done a pre preliminary research um, in, uh, in late 2018. Uh, we have done another, another two uh, areas, one of which was set in the, in the woodland, which had to be uh, carefully cleared out from the wild vegetation. Um, and later in 2018, uh, another part of the forest uh, has been has been measured, and uh, that's the the outcome of 2020 uh, measurements. And uh, unfortunately, I'm I'm not in charge of this, but uh, the oh, the survey was done with three different instruments, and actually, uh, different teams have done it. Uh, my part was was done with with the geoscan uh, unit and the yellow the yellow one as well uh, was carried out by myself. <coughs> the others uh, were delivered to me and I was responsible for processing it. 
So uh, we covered total the area of circa two and a half hectare or a bit more. Uh, of course, numerous dike will dominate the whole image and, uh, and uh, the clustering has been noticed. But it's important to mention that some, some anomalies are excessively strong and uh, they could be related perhaps with thermal and magnetization. So first of all, we have found the cluster of dipole anomalies and some, some uh, strong zone anomaly. Uh, which was uh, quite a good uh, perspective for further research. Then in 2018, we have done the, the part in the woodlands when we have discovered this enormously strong anomalies. Um, as you can see, even in, in, in the range of plus minus 50 nanotesla, they are very clearly visible here. And um, later I will, I will mention what's the interpretation of this. And in 2012, we actually measured all the uh, uh, all the rest of the of the accessible uh, field, which is not taken by the monument. And also, we've been able to distinguish some interesting zones of uh, of dipole clusters or, or or some other kinds of anomalies. And uh, then the discussion starts. So first of all. Uh, about the quest, first question is about the quality and the importance of the research outcomes since uh, the, 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 the British team uh, didn't actually uh, use magnetic method as they consider it uh, might be not the best uh, solution for the site. Uh, and this, that's the second question. But I would like to start with the interpretation of the data and leave the, the first two questions to you. Um, so uh, I have used uh, because to, to have any relation with with uh, the testimonies, uh, I have used the best plan I, I, I think uh, it was created, which is the uh, La, uh, La Ponder's plan from 2004, uh, based on, on the testimonies of, of, of the witnesses. And uh, after combining it uh, in GIS with, with magnetometry data, I was able to uh, to track some particular anomalies and try to link them with with the uh, proposed uh, features on the on the La Ponders map. So uh, after taking out the magnetometry results, you can see that with some minor shiftings, uh, perhaps we are able to. Uh, to uh, interpret some of, of these anomalies as particular objects. Um, and it's not just the wishful thinking. So all the, all the materials will, were thoroughly analyzed. And even here you can see that's, uh, that's the object uh, which we consider to be so-called uh, railway station. Um, even, even in such a cluster of dipoles, you can distinguish some, some patterns, some, some very faint patterns, which could uh, relate to, uh, to, 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 to the remains of, of the particular objects. So uh, to conclude, it is really hard to believe that such important and such close historical event can be so poorly recognized and documented, and uh, that actually scholars take they, uh, took care of it. So, uh, uh, so late. Um, <clears throat> and uh, furthermore, uh, of course, we, we got the, some new spatial information, potential objects uh, with our research. Um, I think that, uh, that we can agree that magnetometry as a prospection method uh, provided satisfying results and, and should not be neglected in, in further works. Um, and we consider it is necessary to continue and to expand the research work uh, in order not only to, to precisely reconstruct the topography, but also to uh, intensify the activities of, of remembrance uh, of, the, of the heritage uh, of this place and uh, the dismal heritage of this place um, and to fulfill the scope of the, of the uh, museal exhibition. So uh, thank you for your attention.